Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to go over the scale transition component. This component was recently uh, demonstrated to me by Sox, so a big thank you to that user for showing it to me. And in the last build, I recategorized it from uncategorized to transform drivers. That's where I believed it belonged. And uh, before I started, you know, showing it with other people and showing where it was and how it worked, I thought I'd get that recategorized for you. That's something I can now do as I have access to the code base. Um, do keep those GitHub requests coming in. And uh, now you've got, you know, uh, the talent team at Neos that now includes me is taking a look at them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scale transition component. I'm going to hop over here into Smooth POV and show you an example. So on the left here, I have a just standard Neos UI checkbox. And when I check it, you'll see that Sox's 3D badge grows out of sort of nothingness and then appears. And if I uncheck it, you'll see it shrinks back down and disappears. This is all being handled by the scale transition component. Let's go ahead and take a look at how you might set this up manually. And then I'll talk about some of the use cases you might want to use this component for in the world or in your creations. So with a developer tooltip equipped, I'm going to go to create new 3D model box. Just move backwards a little bit so the box is in the world. I'm going to inspect it with secondary and then open inspector. Scroll to the bottom and go to attach component, transform drivers, and then scale transition, which is um, right underneath scalar, so scale transition. With scale transition added, there are a bunch of uh, fields. I do want to go over those, but first of all, I want to uh, show you how to set up the ones that are at the bottom that have underscores in front of them. These are the ones that you'll need to set up manually right now, um, and uh, here's how they work. So scale drive is the thing you want to grow or shrink. So in this case, you'll see it was uh, the scale of Sox's 3D badge here. But for this box, we want it to be the size of the box. Let's go ahead and go to the top of the box here, and we'll grab scale, and we'll drop it into scale drive here. The next one is enabled drive. Now this usually would be the active checkbox of the box, but that actually won't work in some cases um, because um, if a slot's inactive, sometimes components won't run on it. That is sort of a, like a case by case basis. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. I know it won't with this particular component, but that's never to fear. What we're actually gonna do is use the uh, mesh renderer and drop that into the enabled property there. Now that that's set up with both the scale drive and the enabled drive set up, we need to specify some other fields. Let's go through them. So show field is whether this object is shown or not. Transition time field is how long the transition will take for the object to be shown or hidden. Show scale field and hidden scale field are the scales for when it's shown for show scale field and hidden for when it's hidden. So when it's hidden, it makes sense for it to be zero, zero, zero. But when it's shown, we actually want it to be one, one, one. I'm gonna go ahead and grab and drop the one from the transition into all three coordinates here. Now you see we get our cube back. If I put this to the right here and I uncheck the show field. You'll see our cube shrinks down and disappears. And not only that, it's turned off this mesh render at the top here. So that's all being handled by one component. You can change the curve field here. The curve field uh, determines how um, the smoothing is done on the transition. So there's sine, cosine, smooth, smoother, linear. Um, linear will make sure that it doesn't have any sort of easing on it, whereas the rest are sort of easing related functions. Just try them out, see what you like. And that's it. That's all the component does. And that's all the component is, uh, you know, that's how easy it is to set it up. Let's now talk about why you might want to use that. Let's say you have some UI for uh, a particular gadget or maybe something in the world. You could use that component to give an easy transition. Let's say they push like a settings button that could then grow the settings UI panel into their, um, into their screen and then they can take a look at it. That's all there is to it for the uh, scale transition component. I think it's very useful. I haven't really found a practical use case for it. Um, Sox has, they've got a, a signal for whether or not they're looking at their Steam VR dashboard, which uses that to display and hide. So if you see Sox in the world, ask them to show, uh, take a look at it and uh, you know, show that we, uh, for them to show you what they did. That's all for scale transition. I'll see you next time for another video. Bye-bye.